Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in DxO Photo Lab 4, which is really just a, it's, it's a great all around product. I have a lot of fun with it and I'm going to try to do more and more videos about it as this year progresses. If there are specific topics or things you would like me to do, workflows or deep dives on tools, things like that around DxO Photo Lab 4, let me know in the comments down below. Today, this video is, I don't, I don't want to call it a deep dive, but it, it's a, at the very least, it's a getting started on the HSL tool because if you look over here in the right-hand corner uh, or on the right-hand side, they have this amazing uh, color wheel HSL tool. And I have to admit, the first few times I messed around with it, I was a little bit like, you know, what? Um, it, it's, uh, I don't want to say confusing, but I guess it could be confusing when you get started. Uh, across the top, you have different color channels. The white one is all colors. And down below, you have saturation, luminance, and un uniformity. Saturation, of course, when you're on the white tab, which, by the way, uh, or channel, uh, which, by the way, once you use something, there'll be a little dot underneath it that'll indicate that it's been used. But as I drag saturation to the right, every color is getting more saturated. I can double click that slider to go back to normal. But notice you don't have luminance or uniformity because this is all colors. You do have those active when you're on these individual color channels. We're gonna get to those in a second. Uh, the color picker as well, you don't have when you're on white simply because it's all colors. When you get in the individual channels, you can use the color picker. But before I do that, I wanna start with this little thing over here. And there's basically two circles here, right? There's an inner circle, which is a little bit larger, and there's this outer circle. So the inner circle, and you see this, uh, hopefully you can see here with my mouse, um, as I drag this, this is basically a hue shift kind of slider. And so where this line lines up, which by the way, if you move it and then double click it, it'll go back. But where this lines up, that inner circle is the color that's like, let's call it selected. Um, and as you drag this outer circle, what happens is you're moving this around and the color that's showing up next to where that line is, which you can see here is now pink, showing up next to the red, it's turning everything pink or kind of magenta that was red. And so as I continue to move this uh, color slide uh, wheel thing around, whatever you call it, as I get into the blue, you'll see that which was red is now kind of bluish purple because those are the colors that are lined up against that line. That line stays fixed there at red and allows you to come around and basically shift tones. Also note that which was kind of greenish yellow, which was the grass, is now kind of in this purple area, right? And so as I continue to drag this around, the stuff that was blue, which was the sky, is now picking up a little bit of this reddish kind of color. And by the way, that which was red over here is now kind of green, which is the truck. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's basically a hue shift, but it gives you a lot of flexibility, and as you can see, you can get some really weird, fun, different kind of colors, which on a photo like this is actually kind of cool. I wouldn't use it on a portrait. You don't want to turn someone into a Smurf uh, or anything like that, but you can do some pretty cool stuff with that hue slider. Now, I'm going to jump into these other channels so we can go into things a little bit more specific here. Now, you'll notice when I clicked on red, it picks the the category of red. And co consequently, when I click on orange, you can see that category is a little smaller. Yellow is even more tight. Green is really big. And that has to do with how uh, we kind of see that color. We see a lot of things as kind of a greenish yellow. We see, see very th few things as kind of a pure yellow or orange. Fewer things as red. This category of kind of what we call green really covers a broad range of colors. But what I want to do is go back to the red and kind of show you that you can adjust that. And so that's what this is. This inner circle here allows you to basically adjust the range of that color. In other words, you're telling this, uh, this photo, here's what I want to define uh, in this category, which is red. Uh, and then you're also able to kind of feather it. And so to adjust the size of the category, tell you what, let me just first do this. Saturation is saturation, up and down. When I take it down, you can see it targets pretty well, but it didn't get all the color out of the truck. There's still some rust. That's probably orange. So that's where adjusting this range over here will come in handy, right? Luminance, let me take that down. You can see what that does. Or if I increase the luminance, I'm gonna reset that. And uniformity, as I said, uh, maybe I didn't say, but uniformity basically blends the different colors in the range that you define to make them more similar. So let's go back up, up here and play with this range. Now we're in this kind of red range and you can drag these bottom two little dots that are kind of on that inner circle and they're gonna expand the range. So in this 
case, I'm going to go that way. And as you can see, as this range gets broader, I'm capturing more of the yellow now. And if I keep going, I start capturing some of the green and you can see what's happening to the image, the color, because remember, I have saturation at negative 100. So the colors that are now in this range are all being desaturated uh, 100% or negative 100. So in other words, I've grabbed green and yellow and added it to this predefined color range and they're all going down to zero color. I can pull that back and say, well, I don't really want to get the greens, you know, but maybe what I want to do is tighten up that range a little bit and I can go like that. Or what would be more appropriate here is this other one, this bottom circle, I can grab that and drag it this way and it's going to get a little bit more of the range to cover more of that kind of rust color. So I'm going to go like this to try to cover that rust color. And you can see now the truck is completely monochrome or desaturated. Whereas before, when it was over here, you can see when I pull that back and some of that orange is coming through, that is not being desaturated because I adjusted the range. So for, for the case of the truck, I would want to go something about like that. And you can see it changing, right? So as I drag this more to the left, you can see like on the hood of the truck, there's a little bit of orange. And as I keep dragging this range, I'm capturing more and more of that orange uh, range or uh, color zone, if you will. And now I've got it all. So I could probably pull this back. I don't think there's much pink in it. And in fact, I can maybe tighten that up a little bit. And if I go, yeah, okay. Now, I don't know if you can see, but like right here on the door, there's a little bit of uh, kind of burgundy red coming in. So I'm going to pull it back this way. And I feel like now I've got every bit of color out of that truck because again, I desaturated by hundred and I expanded that range to make sure I captured all those colors. Now I'm going to reset the saturation. I know I've selected the color and I've got it exactly how I want it. So maybe I want to come in and increase the luminance or decrease the luminance. You can just do whatever you want. And maybe I want to increase the saturation a little bit. And this is where you can get into some really selective color kind of things where I could have a red truck and everything else is desaturated by 100%. So it could be a way to do selective color if you wanted to do that. Now I'm going to reset saturation. Actually, you know what? I know I'm going to, I'm going to go saturation. I'm going to go 100. Um, and now the feathering is this outer dot here. So that inner dot is helping you expand or contract the range. And then this outer dot is the feathering. So it's basically smoothing out the transition from one color zone to the other. So fe just like feathering when you're brushing in something, um, as I go to the left, I'm kind of increasing that feathering and making it a little bit softer transition, which would be here kind of between the orangey yellow and into the green. And then down here, this feathering would be between that really bright orange and into kind of the pink and, and magenta. And that would be feathering for that. So again, it's smoothing that transition between those color zones. And that's how uh, you adjust that. And again, it gives you massive control over the color in your photo. So while I'm there, uh, now I could also, I've, I've clearly defined this range of color. In fact, I can pull it back a little bit. I don't really need much of that magenta, I don't think. And I think I can contract that zone a little bit. Whoops, let me do that and pull this that way. Um, now I could come in because I've isolated that truck and move the hue around, right? And so now let's say I want a blue truck. There you go, I can go change that blue truck. But look at the grass. Some of that grass is turning kind of blue as well. So if I turn this off, if you look at it, that's got a little bit of yellow. So that probably tells me what I should do is expand this zone here. As I do that, it's getting more and more blue. So it's not expand the zone, it's contract the zone. Pull that back a little bit and there you go. You can see I've got all of that blue out of the grass, but I've got a beautiful blue truck. So if I show you the before and the after, I was able to really specifically isolate that truck in terms of all the colors in it, not affect the similar colors that would typically show up in the grass, isolate it just to the truck, and then change the color of it. So really a whole lot of power, a whole lot of control, and really a lot of flexibility, and frankly, just kind of fun. I don't really need a blue truck in my life, but if I did, I would want it to look like that because that's a cool old beat up truck. That's from Route 66, by the way. But regardless, lots of power, lots of control, and that's how you can do some kind of creative things with this. And you can do that with every one of these. So let me reset this tool and I'm going to go in with the red and I'm going to bump up the saturation a little bit. And now I'm going to go to the orange. I'm going to bump that saturation a little bit as well. And now what I want to do is I'm watching the grass to make sure I'm not giving any color bump to that. And so far I think I'm doing okay. Now I'm going to go to this light blue. 
By the way, there's a color picker. I haven't gotten to that yet, so let me do that. So here's a color picker. You can click on that, and you can come over and just choose a color. So let's say I, I think this is light blue, but I'm not sure. If I click on that, you can see over here that my color uh, range moved. It was the default light blue was a little bit further up, and after I clicked in the sky, it adjusted it accordingly. So that's where the dropper comes in. Now I'm going to go ahead and increase the saturation because maybe I want more of a blue sky. Now I'm going to go to green. I'm going to keep this color picker. By the way, the controls are in the bottom left. I've got it all the way uh, the radius uh, at the largest size, but if you're working on a very small area, you can decrease the size of this as well. I'm going to go ahead and leave it uh, as large as it gets for purposes of this video. And now I've got the green. So once again, I'm going to drag the saturation to take a look at it, and I'm going to desaturate to take a look at it. And I think that green is isolated pretty well on its own. So I think I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit and maybe a little bit of the luminance, something like that. Uh, maybe pull that back a little bit. I'm just kind of playing around. This isn't really necessarily how to edit the photo. It's more so a demo of the tools. But as you can see, there's the before and there's the after. I've got a more vibrant blue, a little bit of kick in the orangey red in the truck, and a decrease in the green in the grass. I might come over here now to this red, give it a little bit more saturation and a little bit of luminance, and maybe go to the orange and do a little bit more of the same because maybe I really want to pop that truck and get some of those colors coming to life. So now if I turn that off, a little bit duller sky, definitely a duller truck and grass. It's fairly green, but not overly done. And now with the adjustments I've made, blue sky is popping, red truck is popping, green grass is very subtle, and I like that. Okay, hit reset, and I'm back on the red with no other adjustments to the photo because I want to show you something. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the saturation really high on the red, and then there is a trick here where if you hold down the command key and then drag the, um, the range, you can see the colors uh, by themselves being affected on the image. So you can see that, and, the same, and then when you let go, the full color comes back. And the same thing here. You can kind of see how that range is being affected. And of course, that works for the feathering as well. As I recall, not much feathering needed on that side of things, but over here, you might get a little bit more. So as I drag that more into the green, you can see some of the green of the grass starting to come into the, uh, to be colored. And so basically it's showing up and saying, hey, you're now including that in this range. So if I wanted to pull that back, I might pull this back. And if you look at that grass, I'm looking at this patch right over here, just to the back right uh, bumper here, because that has a lot of green and yellow in it. When I was over here, um, as I hold this down, you can see a little bit of color there. And as I pull this back, you can see I'm pulling back that color and I'm that means I'm further isolating that red in the truck. So it's giving me just a good visual cue for both the color range and the feathering to help me control how that works on the photo. So off and on, you can see that I've isolated that very well. And like I said, if you hold down command and do that, you can see that your truck, in this case, is being affected and nothing else is. And again, I'm on the red, so on the blue, it would be different on the blue. You can see, well, it's hard with the blue because it's so light. Let me do green. On the green, you can see the grass there is being pretty well covered. Now, if I drag it like this, I'm getting a little bit more orange and yellow. So it's picking up some of that same section of the uh, grass in the background, but it's also picking up some of the rust in the truck. So look, you can see a little bit of color coming into the truck. And as I expand this range further into the oranges and reds, it's pulling that whole truck in, which I don't want. So I want to isolate that grass. I think that's done a perfect job. So holding down the command key and dragging those helps you get a visual cue for how you've isolated those colors. And the last thing was uniformity. I didn't really talk about. So uni uniformity, as I said, it just makes all the colors in the selected range uniform or similar. So as you drag this to the right, if you take a look at this red truck that is very saturated, as I drag that to the right, you can see that the colors all start to get a bit more similar. Whereas over here, you have different gradations or variations in the red, orange, yellow tones. So as I drag that to the right, you're getting a lot more vibrant looking color because it's all basically becoming the same color. If I go to the left, you're going to get further variations. As you can see, the rust and things like that look different. So that may come in really handy like with uh, portraits, maybe on skin tones uh, or things like that where you have um, a lot of minor variances in color. It would help you create a more uniform look to that color in your image. And that's really it for this one, my friends. That's HSL. That's the color wheel and the color picker and how that works. 
It's super powerful, it's super fun. It can be a little intimidating at first, but frankly, just play around with it. And don't hesitate to do some experiments with that hue shift because like I told you, you can do the hue shift for the overall, but you can also you know, make a blue truck if you wanted to. Anyway, I'm just playing around. Don't really need the blue truck, like I said, but the truth is it takes a little experimentation. It takes some practice depending on what color look you're trying to achieve, but super powerful, super amazing, so much customization you can do, and frankly, just a lot of fun to play with. That's how the HSL color wheel and color picker tool works in DxO Photo Lab 4. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends. Thanks for stopping by, hanging out, all that kind of stuff. I'll catch you in the next video. You guys stay safe, have fun editing. I'll see you next time, and adios.